dragons, which is what brings this episode of Shadowversity to you. The dragons shirt, which poses the most important reply to any statement or observation. What about dragons? This is my house. Ah, but what about dragons? Oh, so you want me to marry you? But what about dragons? Will you please pass the salt? But what about dragons? Dragons have feelings too, people. We cannot forget the dragons. Available on Teespring. Link in the description. Shadowverses. Greetings, I'm Shad. And this is the video that I, I've, you know, needed to make for a while now because it's the most important question. What about dragons? More specifically, what are the best types of weapons to use against dragons? But not just weapons, all right? Because, you know, weapons. No, no, no. This is, you know me, medieval weapons, historical medieval weapons. Let's get into it. Well, the first issue that we run into when, uh, you know, considering this question is what type of dragons, because the uh, dragons can vary greatly in terms of their strength, durability, resistance, and, uh, you know, offensive capabilities, as well as their speed and maneuverability. That can vary greatly between fantasy settings. So we've got to basically pick uh, uh, a more uh, representative version of a dragon. So generally, Dragons are big, but in some fantasies they can get as big as like castles and mountains and things like that. that, that that's a bit uh, more extreme, okay? I think the standard type of dragons are not that huge, especially in the old school classic fantasies. And I think that's the best basis to go off. Uh, even Smorg, okay, seems a bit big in that regard. Um, if we look at old school medieval artwork and things like that, the dragon seems to be, uh, it can vary from the size of a large horse to the size of about of an ele elephant. And I, I, that's good, I like that. I think that's more representative of dragon size uh, in most fantasies, even though there will be exceptions on either end of the spectrum. Now, size is important because that will determine uh, what type of weapons in a big way, all right? Size will determine its strength, also its maneuverability and stuff like that. Now, I know scientifically it would be profoundly hard for dragons to actually be able to fly, okay? There are, you know, examples of animals of such size with the capability of flight. I'm talking about in the you know, dinosaurs and stuff. Uh, but it would be very difficult, okay? And, uh, some, and also, in regards to dinosaurs, for comparably sized animals that are, have the capability of flight, Look at their proportions, all right? Their, their wings stretch the entire length of their body and their wings are massive, okay? And there's also uh, the matter of the muscle strength to be able to lift them. And so, look, this is fantasy, so uh, we, we're not gonna assess all these scientific uh, impossibilities and stuff, even though I like to, but that's not for this video. We're just gonna say, dragons can fly because. That's generally as good as uh, fantasy, uh, good an explanation fantasy will give. But if you write fantasy and stuff like that and you're putting dragons in, it might be wor worth your while just to ask those questions. Maybe they have hollow bones. Because this would be really interesting. Like, if you had to answer these questions, this would affect how to fight them. Because say dragons had hollow bones to make them lighter to enable the flying, well, that would mean big, heavy, blunt weapons would be brilliant against them because you could just shatter their bones so easily and you could take out the dragons. But say they have hollow bones, but they have really tough skin, so swords could be useless in this context. But generally, fantasies never go into that level of depth. They just say they can fly because they, they can fly. Which, you know, see, that's why I like fantasy that has more detail and things about these questions. Like, the answers, the way you resolve conflict and plot is far more satisfying because, you know, if, if these creatures had a specific weakness that you could exploit and you knew when to fight, it would just make the combat, the adventures far more interesting. But no, their bone density seems to be pretty standard for dragons. And on top of that, uh, they, uh, their speed, uh, as a... Uh, it's, it's funny, for a creature this big, its speed should technically be far slower, but its speed seems to be pretty good, okay? And faster than an elephant, but uh, elephants are a big creature and they can't move nearly as fast as what we can see dragons moving. And then, uh, of course, they have big claws, tough hide, scaly, you know, skin, um, sharp, dangerous teeth, and the big one, they can breathe fire. Mm. 
In reality, if you were going up a creature that could throw napalm at you, oh, gee, you would want to stay as far away from that thing as possible. And this is where we come into the first kind of weapons you would really uh, use against dragons. And I like the movie Dragon Hunt because of this. It's not perfect. They, they show, you know, a main character going toe-to-toe -to -toe with just a puny little sword and... No, like if a dragon could breathe fire and you just had a sword, you're screwed! I don't care, right? Napalm in your face, you're dead. But what they did do good in that movie was they used balusters. And I think something like that, all right? You, you need something with range because you want to stay as far away from this beastie as you can, okay? But you need something with power, powerful enough to pierce its scaly hide. And the baluster really does fit this criteria. The, the huge problem with it is its maneuverability. A, a dragon, especially flying, they can close the distance very quickly. So one baluster wouldn't do the trick because as soon as the dragon notices that it's getting fired at or threatened by, you know, a big like bow, you know, mechanism, it'll probably attack it. Dragons seem to be fairly intelligent. Now that's a dangerous thing right there, very dangerous. The dragon's also intelligent, combined with all these other things. But uh, having said that, it's a bit 50-50, especially in classic fantasy and also original medieval literature, dragons are not intelligent. They are uh, brute beasts as much as any other monster. Animal-like monster, I mean. Uh, so yeah, but anyway, the dragon would attack the baluster, so but you'd want to set up several <laughs> and try and shoot it from multiple locations. So if the dragon is going after one baluster, you can shoot at it with another and hopefully do the job because it depends how good they are at surviving. And this is, a, this is an interesting thing because I've actually done a little bit of research on how easy it is to take down animals with long, pointy, stabby, shooty kind of arrow. I'm talking about arrows, okay, and horses. Uh, because uh, people seem to have take for granted that uh, you can just take out a horse fairly easily with a bow and arrow. Uh, I don't like it because a horse is a big creature, and we can draw parallels between uh, using a bow and arrow against a horse and using a baluster against a dragon. Seems to be fairly comparable equivalents. Well, you can't kill a horse straight away unless you, you know, get it right in the eye. But a hunter told me, someone who uh, hunts deer, okay, and he can take out a deer with a hunting bow, and so this isn't a war bow, around 60 pound. Uh, the way that you do it is uh, shoot the deer in the side, okay? There's far less uh, meat and muscle uh, between the animal's exterior and its heart when you shoot at it in its side. And that is not a guarantee that it will drop the animal straight away. It'll generally run off, bleed out, and then die. Uh, the only way you're able to kill it straight away is if you shot it right in the heart, okay? Pinpoint accuracy, or right through the eye in the head. Uh, and because... Uh, horses, they have thick skulls, okay? Uh, drawing another, not as thick as, say, uh, cattle, but uh, if you, I, I've seen cattle be put down, you know, ready for slaughter, meat, yummy, steak, right? Uh, if you they miss and you don't get them straight in the eye, the bullet ricochets off their skull, okay? And horses' skulls are a lot thicker than humans, uh, even though I was drawing a parallel with cows, but I don't think they're as thick as cows, but still, I don't think an arrow would be able to pierce a horse's skull. You'd need to get it through the eye. So, uh, now looking at dragons, I think that would be the same. Killing a dragon with a single baluster shot have to be a bit of a one in a million shot, in my opinion. So, uh, and it's funny, I, I'm focusing a lot on balusters because this really is already the very best pick. You need distance. Every other weapon, every other, every other you know, type of uh, attack, plan of attack, like that dragon fire-breathing thing, oh, it's suicide. Shields, that's, it's not going to protect you against napalm, all right? <laughs> but don't worry, we'll, we'll assess the question if we could take out the fire breathing and keep everything else, okay? So other medieval style weapons could come into play in this analysis. But with that napalm, yeah, no, nothing, uh, nothing of the medieval period that I can think of could, could protect a person from projectile napalm at close range. And I don't think uh, war bows would be able to kill a dragon, probably annoy them. You need something far more powerful. So we're getting into siege level weaponry. Um, you could probably hurt a dragon pretty good with a, a trebuchet or a catapult, but uh, harder to reload and uh, harder to hit. Ballisters, you have a bit more of you know versatility and uh, 
uh, in being able to aim the thing, and also can reload a bit faster. The thing is though, unless it's a one in a million shot, especially if the dragon's flying in the air, I don't think you would kill it with one shot. No, like, uh, but you could hit it. So, uh, the, 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 the tactic that I think would work best for dragons is ballisters, but with ropes on the end, and the type of arrowhead on the baluster would be a, a vicious pronged hook-like thing that once it gets stuck in, it can't be pulled out. And then if you tie a rope to an anchor point, whether it's a tree or something like that, and shoot that in the dragon, bang, you could solve one big problem here, and that's its maneuverability. You could, if you ground the thing, you, yeah, big problem solved. And then, if you're able to immobilize the creature, baluster shots, and not just one, try and get multiple ones with uh, tied onto ropes, ground the thing. Then when it's immobilized, you can set up your baluster and shoot that one in a million. Well, it wouldn't, wouldn't be one in a million shot. It would be, you know, maybe a one in 20 shot. Maybe one, no, maybe one in five, all right? If you, if you get as close as you can, that's still out of range from the napalm, the fire breathing, right? And shoot it. Maybe a ballista, I don't know, could a ballista pierce a dragon's skull? It'd be, have to be pretty powerful, but maybe through the eye, through the side, okay? That's the money point, all right? Uh, a point where there is the least amount of meat between it and a vital organ, hit it, shoot it in its heart, and then let it bleed out. I think that's the way you'd want to take out a dragon. Okay then, what if the dragon didn't breathe fire? Uh, this changes up a bit, I, I, I think, because the, the first one, it has a lot of setup. You need, <laughs> there's a lot of uh, you know uh, logistics you'd need to figure out to uh, take out a fire breathing dragon like that. Uh, but without you know you know without the fire breathing, what weapons would be most effective? Again, that principle: keeping yourself as much distance as you can. It's hard to tell how effective. I don't think. Uh, look, it's hard to tell. But in my opinion, even though it's hard, I still think. Uh, war bows, maybe for the arrow was particularly heavy, maybe maybe you would need special custom arrows to try and take on dragons that would be able to pierce their thick hide to do some significant uh, damage. But that means range would be far limited than uh, the standard war bow ranges, but those ranges are pretty high anyway. So maybe using really thick dragon level arrows in a war bow. Um, uh, Maybe that can do enough damage and its range would be kind of hunting uh, level range, okay? But that's the range, okay? What about me? Is there any type of melee, medieval melee weapon that would be most effective against dragons? And again, common sense. You want distance. This, this beast is strong, it's powerful, all right? It can fly, gosh. Yeah, flying is going to be a really big problem, especially if the dragon has kind of any brains and knows how to employ it properly in combat, and that would be just to swoop any enemies or things that it feels as a threat, take them out with a big claw swipe or bite, and then get its altitude back. In reality, a creature of this size wouldn't really be able to do that because gaining such height with its weight would be very difficult. In fact, uh, for any type of beast of significant size, for them to actually gain flight, they need kind of an elevated perch to launch themselves off of. Just jumping from a f you know flat ground with no strong wind currents to help them out, very difficult for them to gain any altitude. But dragons can fly because fantasy. And dealing with dragon swoop attacks would be very hard. So what would be the best weapons to try and handle these large swooping attacks? Well, still the ballisters, in my opinion. Try and keep as much distance from yourself and the dragon as possible, and ground the thing. Try and incapacitate it, the whole, you know, beast, or at the very least, its ability to fly. The next best weapon to try and handle, you know, swoops and the dragon ability of flight uh yeah pikes pike like if you could get a, a unit of pikemen assembled all right and a unit maybe five to ten i think you have a good chance to take out that dragon if it can't breathe fire especially if you got five men on either side the uh, beast's intelligence would vary because uh generally uh if you look at animals they are not smart enough sometimes they are but it varies but a charging animal generally will run right into a big pointy thing that's uh, placed towards them. So with pikes, if a dragon can't figure out that big pointy thing is bad for me when I'm charging at you, good chance it'll run itself and uh, kill itself on your pikes. Problem solved. 
If it has the intelligence to know that I don't want to run into this thing, and because it's so big, it can just hit those pikes aside with a big sweep of its massive claw. <sighs> Now these tactics that I've just mentioned would be equally as useful against the dragon if it wasn't flying. And say you had a fantasy setting where dragons needed an elevated, you know, position to launch themselves off of and actually gain altitude, so in most cases the dragon would be grounded. But even grounded, uh, same issues would apply. Pikes, you know, probably your best bet outside of, you know, ballisters and such. But what about any other types of weapons? It'd be hard to say how useful uh, shields would be. Uh, and it again goes into that intelligence thing. Um, because a shield, like if you use against, say, uh, you know, say if you're fighting a lion in comparison, um, uh, if you're holding a shield, most likely the lion would just jump on you and grab the shield, which could give you an opening to hit it on its head. A dragon is far larger, and so I'm like, no, I don't think shields would be too helpful for you either. It might save you from the first strike, the big claw strike, or. Mm, I think uh, its jaws would probably still get you. Like, in terms of animals, right? Even on us, the uh, the, str the muscle strength of our, of our jaw muscles is actually really significant. Like, you can bite through fingers. Human jaw muscles bite through the fingers. And then we go to animals, okay, look at crocodiles or even wolves and stuff. Uh, these mu jaw muscles are dangerous. And if you were to multiply that to the size of a dragon, uh, like, I'm not sure that the shield would be able to withstand being chomped on. I think uh, you would lose your arm and the shield if you're trying to so, say, yeah, I'm not sure shields would be too good for you either. But if you're not using shields, that means uh, you've freed up your off hand, if, if you still have the hand and has a big bitten off, for a two-handed weapon, something with reach. Which goes back to the pikes. I think pikes in a unit, your best option. And maybe even if you were just one, <laughs> In real life, if dragons existed and you tried to take on a dragon by yourself, you'd, you'd have to be damn suicidal, okay? Or just an absolute hero, which means you'd have to be Chuck Norris. Maybe Chuck Norris could take on a dragon. The issue with pikes is, well, it's funny. They offer a huge advantage because of their, you know, reach. But there's an issue with them that I've even uh, come across this when I'm fighting someone with a spear, a shorter spear. And uh, that is as soon as you get inside, okay, that point, they get inside their reach, it's almost game over. For a person, you get inside their reach, uh, they can try and draw it back, but all you have to do is ad advance as quick as they can draw back and they're stuffed and then you hit them. And uh, I had a good, uh, you know, a good fight session with a mate where he was using a spear. And that was the key, okay, uh, knocking aside that spear and then rushing them, can't do a thing, hit him every time. The issue is knocking it aside. <laughs> uh, I was able to do it 80% of the time, maybe 80 to 90, but when I didn't, I got hit raw right in the chest or I would have been run through. So it's a, uh, fighting people with spears is risky. Could a dragon knock aside the pike? That, that's the question, because if he does and he rushes you, you're pretty much screwed. But if he doesn't, you have a good chance of uh, skewering it. Oh, but I think it's... <laughs> Fighting a dragon is tough. That's what I'm discovering. Thing that fighting a dragon is very, very tough because it'd be hard to kill the beast instantly. Even if it rushed you, yeah, 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 got the pike, you got it, and it rushes you, and it goes right through it. Okay, unless it goes through the heart, it's not going to kill the beast anyway. And it has so much, you know, mass and momentum running towards you, you get trampled, chomped, and you're dead anyway. Oh, so um, maybe even with the, the five guys at the pikes, that would be their fate. This is fighting dragons is hard. Stick to the ballisters, all right? Who are these um, suicidal nutcases trying to take on a dragon melee? My goodness. All right, so I'm kind of going down the list, all right? And uh, so ballisters first. Next one, uh, d this would depend. You can't really test in real life, but huge heavy war bows with massive arrows, maybe. that, that Maybe that could inflict enough damage. Then pikes and pole arms, anything with reach to keep, keep your distance. And then going down the list, the next best weapon, which is, you know, also in the same sense, worst weapon, uh, depending on what we look at. But the next best one, it's funny, like, um, could you use a sword against a dragon? Uh, you, it would need to be a big heavy sword, okay, with a lot of bite, okay? Because almost universally dragons have tough, thick skin, especially they're, they're, because they're so big, it puts more muscle and flesh between you and their vital organs. So, uh, 
it's difficult. So yeah, maybe a sword could, but uh, it, it's a matter of diminishing returns. For the weight that you would get out of a really big sword, I don't think you would also get as much of an increase in uh, damage potential against the dragon. But there's another weapon. If you were to increase the weight to a comparable level as you would need to increase in a sword, I think the damage potential increases in a far more optimal way for this weapon. And that's the axe, okay? The axe has far more damage potential than the sword. The sword is more versatile, okay? It's easy to use because uh, more, there's more of the blade that can actually damage and kill people, of the, sorry, more of the weapon, where the axe has a far smaller kind of strike range on it. And I'm talking about big axes, okay? Uh, single one-handed axes, probably, I'm talking about big axes, so, you know, Dane axe or pole axe we're looking at. I think they could do some damage against a dragon and potentially kill it if you get a lucky shot. Catch it off guard. Probably This is the other tactic. Catch a dragon off guard, okay? Don't fight fair with this thing. One on one, in most situations, you'd be screwed. Like, also, you know how we talk about shields, the, the chomping potential of a dragon? I'm not even sure full plate mail would protect you against that. It's hard to gauge, uh, but... There's no animal with heads like this big, okay? A dra dragon skull, generally about this big, because depending on that, not even full plate armor might save you. Oh, gee. It's a tough fight, but the, those are my picks. In regards to what about dragons? What are the best medieval weapons to use against dragons? Those are my picks. The Ballister, followed by maybe bows. Bows is a maybe, so maybe that's a 1.5 or Anyway, after balances, big pole arms, so pikes, okay, something with long and pointy, long spear, stuff like that. And after that, axes. But you'd be dead already, so. My condolences. But that is it. Thank you for watching. It's been a pleasure and a joy as always. And until next time, farewell.